So, Berto, for the past couple years, I've been wanting to do an episode in which we talk about the pandemic, in which we summarize the entire experience, because there's so much to talk about in terms of what it was like and the psychology and our personal experiences, because it was such a weird, unique time that we might literally never experience again, or at least in that way, right? Because it's if we have other moments like that, maybe they'll be similar, but not our first rodeo when it comes to this sort of thing. You know what I mean? And I have been waiting for the pandemic to end, but <laughs> it's not ending, Berto. So I thought we would just sort of arbitrarily pick now, which is January of 2023, to right. review the past almost three years. What do you say, Berto? Let's do it. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. My name is Humberto Castaneda, and I'm the president of the Hibiscus Denial Society. This episode is based on research that I did regarding my own life, my own memories. I also looked into pictures and videos going back the past couple years to jog mm. my memory. I also looked at my calendar, you know, I have a pretty detailed yeah. digital Gmail calendar. I looked at news articles from the time and, and timelines that show uh, day by day, not only in the right. world, not only in the United States, not only Washington State, but Seattle, there, there are different compilations of timelines that break down. Because to me, I was right. trying to figure out when did the lockdown exactly happen? Because I remember it was a day that yeah. suddenly everything was different. And I kind of wanted to get into that. And I, I also read my journal and asked Stacy and other people what their memories were. And so I compiled this episode. And this episode is going to be real long. In fact, I'm guessing it's going to be multi-part. 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 Yeah. So it is for the purpose not only of trying to create content that is interesting for the listeners, but also, Berto, I just need to explore this document yeah like we gotta say what happened <laughs> well not only document you know for uh, i guess historians a thousand well, when the years, aliens look at it yeah, yeah they'll they'll, <laughs> they'll might they might want data from this era right. from a, a number of people and we'll add to that but uh, another part of it is emotionally for me mm -hmm. i just feel like i need to wade through the details because right. as it was happening it was Every day, especially in the beginning, it was it was this breakneck speed mm -hmm. of differences, you know, like all totally. of a sudden, boom, huge difference, boom, huge difference. And you didn't have time to really absorb what had happened. And so it was a lot of survival. And then and it was a slow it suddenly occurred <laughs> instead of it being like a an abrupt ending to the experience of the quote unquote pandemic it's been kind of like smeared across so let's go back to the very beginning i guess before the pandemic ever started i just want to provide kind of the precursors mm -hmm. if, if they're when they make a movie about this right some of them will start in the 80s 90s aughts when you have thousands of people conducting research regarding mm -hmm viruses, coronaviruses, immune system, vaccines, people looking at pandemics in general, people realizing, wait a second, like, yeah, the flu uh, is pretty awful, but there was this thing called the Spanish flu, there was the thing called the bubonic plague, there was a thing called the Black Death, and at some point, it it's going to happen to us, and we're no better at being able to manage that today. In fact, we're much worse off because of the globalization of our society and right. how, you know, like the movie 12 Monkeys is, is about this concept. Um, all the research is looking at transmission vectors and are not and tracking viruses, social ecology, masks, government research, all this kind of stuff. So, and particularly we have 30 years of research regarding the, MN, the mRNA vaccines, right? right? And I didn't even know that this research was going on. I knew about the classic vaccines, like right. the flu vaccine. They need a they need a, a literal egg. They need a chicken egg for every single dose. Yeah, because you got to put it on some or organism that can grow. Some some you can't just you couldn't do it in a vat. Let's say you had to actually fertilize something. Yeah, you have to yeah. like propagate the yeah. the material so it'll multiply. Right. In the background, this research has been going on regarding- And it could get contaminated easily, like with a lot of other stuff. Mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know anything about it, but uh, I do know that 
I was terrified when COVID began because I knew enough to know that vaccines, the traditional way, takes forever. <laughs> takes years and years. It takes four or five years to develop. And by then, obviously, the strain would have changed and yeah. countless people would be dead. And so you need some very fast way of developing a vaccine and distributing it. And in the background, there was this extremely futuristic way of, of administering a vaccine where you inject a little bit of material into yeah. your body and then your own cells propagate the vaccine. Yeah. You're essentially teaching your cells to manufacture the vaccine from within us. And what, what's crazy is that uh, although the tech for the manufacturing part had been coming for a long time, you know, uh, it used to be that you, you, you know, you still f first needed to sequence whatever it was you were going to manufacture and the sequencing would take forever, you know, if you could even do it. Right. And because of AI, it was just like the right place, right time. They were able to sequence it so quickly. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. So we were coincidentally, serendipitously developing. I mean, obviously, there was known worries and known problems that they were right. trying. But because I remember they interviewed some of the researchers on the mRNA vaccines as soon as it became clear that we would need to utilize that technology. And I remember they interviewed this this lab researcher and he's just like, yeah, all of a sudden I'm like super popular. People, <laughs> everyone wants to talk to me. Rewind the clock a week ago and I was just this nerd in a right. lab coat developing something that when I went to a dinner party, no one cared about everyone thought it was boring and all of a sudden like i'm 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 the hot girl in town yeah, yeah. you know what i mean and i just thought golly that's i could just... see that they're at a party a few months earlier well i'm working on this like sequencing of oh your, your eyes are rolling okay never mind yeah and then all of a sudden you are the savior of you, know, you and other people like you yeah and there are thousands that's the thing to understand is that there were thousands upon thousands of researchers and then you have governments who are funding this. You have big pharma like yep. Moderna, Pfizer, others yep. dumping millions, maybe billions of dollars into this technology well in advance of needing it. You know, you yeah. have all this R&D and all this forethought scientists doing science things, policymakers thinking about this sort of thing because, you know, they're going to make money off of it. Sure. But also there's probably some people thinking – it'd be good to help society in this way. You know what I mean? Right. So well, it's this irony where to make a lot of money, they would need a lot of people to need to be vaccinated. And that would only happen in a really bad situation. Yeah. So yeah, it, it has to be a combination of like, well, we could, this is a big investment, but we could make a lot of money. But if we need it, we're going to need it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, someone comes to the administrators because it's always the, R&D nerd scientists that are coming up with it. And then you, you go to the powers that be within Moderna and Pfizer. And, and essentially, I think the pitch is, look, we think we have a, this is 30 years ago, we think we have a technology right. that if the time comes and we have to very quickly mass produce, and they were probably at the time thinking on a national level, not an international level, vaccine, then we would be, this technology might be able to actually do that. Yeah. And for relatively low amount of investment in the moment, you can actually produce something that's affordable for everyone. You know, it's not going to be like thousands of dollars per dose, you know, because once you get the technology down, you would actually be able to pump this stuff out real fast and you'd be able to dial in the exact protein that we're actually going right. for, which is what the mRNA vaccine is. It's, yeah. it's so precise. It's like a you know, what they call it, the smart bombs or something. Yeah. That, <laughs> so another part of this episode that I want to do that's already meandering is <laughs> I kind of want to review the last year because sometimes we'll do a review of the previous year and I kind of want to... And a lot happened last year. <laughs> yeah, 2022. Yeah. And one of the news events that I had no idea was there was, I believe, an Al-Qaeda upper person who was killed. Oh, right, yeah. The mRNA vaccine is like that that missile that doesn't explode, but these blades. Have you seen this thing? Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. The little comes out 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's like something out of a science fiction movie. Totally. You know, instead of exploding, it's sort of like in Star Wars Episode Three when those, those bots land on Obi-Wan and Anakin's mm-hmm. spaceship, yeah. and instead of exploding, which would be a lot more easier to take the spaceship out, they open up, and then these little droids start trying to take apart your spaceship, you know what I mean? Right. In the same way, <laughs> this instead of this missile blowing up when it hits the car, these blades come out, and the and create like a a six foot diameter blade extravaganza yeah. and it just kills everything that it that it you know blasts through which is yeah it's insane <laughs> so yeah so if you're visualizing the movie in your mind it you have you have a, a nerd going to a dinner party talking right. about mrna and no one's interested and then you fast forward and suddenly everyone's interested okay that brings us to december 2019 which is where we get the covid 19 name from right but and all of us are unaware blissfully blissfully unaware which we have the first documented cases of sars cov 2 or what we initially would call the coronavirus and now we would call covid 19 in wuhan Tr- china which i'd never heard of before this had you heard, ever heard of wuhan I china I, now it's so ubiquitous that it sounds like I've always known, but probably never. <laughs> yeah. Later, we would realize that the virus was already spreading in Washington State at this point. Did, you, did you know that? Well, yeah, I've heard that. I, I, I think we we only knew the first case we knew about was in late January. But yeah, it seems like it was already there, and we just didn't know. Yeah. So the, the 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 which we'll get to. There's someone who's identified as the first person yeah. in the United States, but he wasn't the first person. Right. He, but he did just come from Wuhan. Which was like Everett or something, right? Uh, in Snohomish. Snohomish, yeah. Snohomish County. And, um, well, maybe Everett. I don't know exactly the city, but I remember it was up north. Yeah. And, 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 but it was concerning. We were like, wait, that's just around the corner. <laughs> yeah. But if, so I don't know the exact, if they know this, but I suspect based on this that the SARS-CoV-2 virus had already been circulating within Wuhan, China months prior to yeah. December of 19 who knows well I'm sure you've heard I, I've heard so many anecdotal stories of people saying that they were very sick that December and they never knew what it was right yeah. right so that's how we came to learn that it was already circulating through Washington you know, Western Washington December 19 because yeah. people came forward later and, and were like well you're describing what I had in December yeah and then they test them for antibodies and, they, and they've they, got them yeah oh, this, wow. you know pre <laughs> pre-vaccine right wow yeah and by the way Berto I asked you to prep some stats so feel free to you know oh, sprinkle okay. in as they seem relevant yeah my, my stats are not from the beginning okay. so, so we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get, get there. to my stats it might be episode three by the time <laughs> we get there yeah <laughs> this is the first episode where I'm actually like because usually I sit down, I look at the notes, and I'm like, yeah, it'll take 45 minutes, and then it's like three and a half hours later. This is the first time when I was I was like super nerding out on this the past yeah. week. I was like all, I was obsessed with like, because right. personally, I just wanted to know like the details, like when everything happened, yeah. and the exact nature of, of everything. It felt like, I don't know, it just felt like I was archaeology dig of my own life that I forgot because it's such a weird time you know yeah it's like a dream that's what Stacy said you know I was asking her about you know what her memories were about those first few months and she you know after we were talking about a little bit she's like you know it's kind of like a dream well I've had uh, even just uh, this weekend I went to uh, a get-together at my brother's there were two people there who were his friends from Capitol Hill from years ago. I'd met him, you know, all the way back then, like 15, 20 years ago. Uh, and then they were at this party. And I'm like, oh my gosh, hey, you guys. Oh, I haven't seen you. What, it's been like 20 years, 15 years, 20 years? And they're like, well, I mean, we, we saw you at your mom's barbecue a year and a half ago. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, right. There was this whole series of things that happened in the last three years that I've either just misplaced or put like way before or they just never happened. Right. There was another thing that happened where I thought there was someone that I had talked to uh, in 2019, like spring of 2019. And last year I was thinking, oh, I should probably give him a call because it's been it's been a few months. And then I looked at our, our chat log and it was like over two years prior. 
It's like, oh my God. Yeah. It's like these black holes of time. Yeah. I, I yeah. think it, there's this weird time distortion that we might label yeah. for the past few years where on one hand, things seem like it was just yesterday. And on the other hand, things seem like they were ages and ages yeah. ago, like a, a previous lifetime. Like yeah. I, I did, like, like what Stacy says, like a dream, like it didn't even really happen. So um, in January, 2020, I remember hearing news about a quote unquote lockdown in Wuhan, China. At the time, I 100% figured that it was just another panic that would never impact me or or 99.9% .9 of Americans, mm. you know. Yeah. Ebola happened not that long prior and the amount of panic that was happening, I think it was 2015. Mm, yeah, the yeah. amount of panic. Yeah, when there was like one guy that traveled to the country, had Ebola. Yeah. And we were all like, oh, we're gonna die. Yeah, <laughs> I think a total of two Americans died yeah. from Ebola. I mean, a lot of people in Africa had died, but it yeah. wasn't it wasn't tremendous, and it was pretty gruesome. In because it's of, hard to catch it, which is, I mean, hard comparatively. Harder yeah. to catch it. Yeah. Pretty gruesome to catch it, right? Uh, it's it's like, what, 50% death rate if you catch okay. it. Okay. So bad. Yeah, and the amount of news coverage and the paranoia, and I remember getting scared myself, yeah. and then fast forward a couple months and it was a non-issue the right. zika virus would just i'm not saying it wasn't a terrible thing but yeah. when you essentially living in seattle it was feeling like a lot of crying wolf yeah even with h1n1 which i actually got oh, okay in 2010 or 2009 or whenever it was mm -hmm. floating around the swine flu right right it was this really scary thing and i got the flu because i usually did when it, even though i would get vaccinated although i think i got the flu i started getting more rigid about getting the flu vaccine after i got h1n1 because it was pretty bad but it wasn't awful right mm -hmm. it, like it, if if you would have told me that it was a very similar sick intensity as previous flus i would have been like yeah maybe okay. so you know it wasn't i wasn't scared for my life or anything yeah, yeah. And, and so even then I'm like, well, a lot of these things, if you're healthy, like it just, it, it's yeah. fine. You get sick and, and I don't want to get sick. I hate being sick. I hate being sick. Right. You know, I'm one of those people that opens handles with a handkerchief and that kind of <laughs> stuff. You know, I'm not, I'm not like cavalier about it, but I'm also by January of 2020 yeah. and I hear about yet another virus, I'm thinking, everything will probably be yeah, fine. Yeah, I mean, at most you're probably like, well, we should watch it and see like, see how it develops or whatever, but yeah. we're fine. Yeah. yeah, and even as I say that out loud, there's a part of me, and I'm sure people in the audience are saying, well, Kirk, you're an idiot because of course viruses are a big deal and pandemics are possible, but this is part of the documentation that I want to lay out. I am extremely, for a lay person, I am extremely... Uh, uh, in contact with the science around a lot of things that are outside of my expertise, but particularly around viruses, there's their podcasts I listen to that I would say uh, among all the scientific topics they talk about, 15, 20% is about potential pandemics. So it's sort of like I know about the various different probabilities of the earth being struck by a comet or an asteroid that will be a an extinction level event i i and and about all the science about how to how we monitor that and how yeah. we could potentially throw a, an object off course so we don't all die you know I, i'm just interested in that kind of science it's interesting and so i've been up to date about the the virus in fact well anyway point but, is, is uh, that well, you're in other words you're not saying well, I never thought a virus could do damage. You're just saying like, in general, there's been a lot of times where there's been viruses and then we hear that it's gonna be the end of the world and it's just a news cycle. Right, and did I think that at some point in my lifetime there would be a super virus that would, mm -hmm. that would kill a lot of people? Yeah, I did figure that, but by the time it was January of 2020, even though I feel smart about it. I feel up to date about it. I feel knowledgeable about it. I feel appropriately worried about such an event. When I heard all the news coming out of Wuhan, China, yeah. I was not concerned at all. Right. 
Alberta. If like you were in the ninety nine point nine 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 percent, right? Uh, yeah. It, so I was sort of the opposite of you in that I. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had read what are that the book about the Ebola outbreaks. I read two books about Ebola. And, oh, really? Yeah, but 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 in in the sense of like kind of how I would read a zombie book, right? Hmm. I didn't. Do you, do you I guys, didn't even know you were into that kind of. Well, I was, but but as but I'm saying that in the real world. I was completely unaware. Like, for example, when H1N1 happened, it just missed me. Like, and not only that I didn't catch it, I wasn't even aware it was a thing. So when people were like, swine flu, swine flu, I found out way later because I remember someone was talking about swine flu and I'm like, what's that? They're like, what do you mean, what's that? That was that big thing last year. And I'm like, wait, what? I, oblivious. And so if you had asked me like January 15th, Berto, what do you think of the Corona or, you know, COVID or whatever, whatever they were calling it at the time. I would have said novel coronavirus. I would have said, first of all, I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Second of all, I'm sure it's nothing. Right. Okay. But January 24th, I watched a video on YouTube by. Well, let's wait. Let's wait. Okay. Okay. So we're not January 24th. Yeah. I I, I got, I'm real micro. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) I'm at the very, I'm Jan 1 at this point. Don't skip ahead. Okay. So Jan 1, I don't even know what COVID is. And if you had asked me about the swine flu, I, I still probably would have been like, I don't know, it was a thing. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah, okay. And if you had asked me, what about SARS that happened? What do you mean SARS? What's SARS? Yeah, I knew about SARS barely. I, I didn't know any of it. I barely knew about MRSA. Nope, nothing. Um, and so... So I was like doubly unaware. <laughs> but the other, the other part of it that made me not worried at all was the news wasn't about the virus it was about china's draconian measures yeah. to contain the right, virus right, right. in this province right and i thought well you know they they not only is it probably not an issue yeah but china seems to be doing their typical thing and yeah. really uh, uh, enacting their government control to yeah. so it won't at, even leave at, there. at the expense of the humans on the ground yeah. you know what i mean you just yeah. imagine the the dehumanization and i my impression also was that wuhan wasn't like one of the privileged provinces you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> it was like the uh i don't know the south dakota or something of china and thus there's not a lot of political power that they're going to be yeah. able to wield to to say hey stop rounding us up into apocalyptic 80s style movies you know yeah. and making yeah okay so I figured, yeah, you know, it'll, whatever, it'll be fine. Um, and then January 9, the first confirmed death happens in Wuhan, but I probably didn't hear about it. But then, skip forward, January 21, the, the CDC, United States, announces that someone, well, let's take a break, Bert, and we get back, I'll tell you what happens. Let's do it. Okay, so January 21, CDC announcement, 35-year-old man living in Snohomish County, maybe Everett, tested positive, first case, in, first official case in the United States. Later evidence suggested it arrived earlier. He had just returned from Wuhan, China after, after visiting his family there. He had returned on January 15th, and so by the time he re, uh, reports to urgent care with symptoms of pneumonia just four days later on January 19th, He's released from the hospital on February 3rd, so he stays for a couple weeks. And after two weeks of treatment, including, oh, he was treated for two weeks in hospital with the antiviral drug remdesivir, Remdesivir, which they still use. Yeah. Yeah. And he did okay. They had already known from China that there was this novel coronavirus and I guess they ran tests or just figured based on his symptoms or something. And so I remember there were announcements about it and it was like, oh, it's here. But I remember thinking the similar thing with Ebola. We had a, one or two cases of people who came directly from that region in Africa mm-hmm. who had Ebola. And we also hear that the guy recovered, right? Doesn't sound yeah. pleasant, but it didn't kill him. So then what happened on January 25th? Well, so on January 24, um, I because I looked at through my YouTube history, I found exactly the video. Um, it's from a channel that I definitely do not endorse because I didn't realize this at the time, but they're a total conspiracy channel. So they, it's like one of those clocks that are broken, but they're, twi- they're right twice a day. This is what happened. I randomly came across this video and it was about that it, the title of the video was China is not 
it giving us all, it's, it's like it came short of saying that they were lying but china is not being upfront about what's going on i was like what so i started watching the video and it is presented very neutral. The guy's not yelling or anything like that. And they show a lot of graphs and a lot of charts and all yeah, that. Yeah, so just pausing. This would be in the movie depiction yes. of this event. You would have you and I and maybe even experts in the field of vi- virology right. would be like, yeah, everything's fine. And then you have this crank. The random crank, yes. Uh, on the side, yes. like screaming into the ether. Yes. And yes. everyone's looking at him like, oh, that guy is. That's, but and it's true, like before and after. But he also believes in having aluminum <laughs> exactly. foil hats. And exactly. he believes that, I don't know, the the aliens made the, the pyramids or something. And so it, for, because he's such an outside of the box thinker, he just randomly happens on. <laughs> and he happened to deep dive on this one topic and he was right. Yeah. And so anyway, so I watched the video and I am not, I don't believe in conspiracy theories. I'm not into that stuff, but I watched this video and they showed so much footage of what was act, like actual footage of what was going on that I hadn't seen. And then they showed all these charts of the, and they start, they actually started talking about uh, all the cases that were popping up in France, one place here and, and the length of, time between they discovered it till they were in the ICU and all these things. So I was tinfoil all of a sudden. I had a little tinfoil hat and I started being the weirdo among my family and friends. As an example, my brother was like, hey, I'm planning, he was at the time living in San Francisco. And in early February, he was like, hey, I'm planning a a trip. Like when, when should we come up? Like come up to Seattle. And I said, I don't know, man. I don't know if, I don't know if we're gonna be able to travel much. Like I got a Disney trip coming up which I might cancel. I don't, wow. know, I don't know what March is going to do. You, early February. Early February. My goodness. But only you, because of these weird crank videos. Yeah. I mean, you never <laughs> said anything like that to me. Well, so I felt a little like embarrassed you don't care about, about my life? It. No, no. I felt embarrassed about it. Like at work, as an example. Yeah. At work, we had a little round circle in the Yeah, hallway. I mean, you would have been maybe one of three people in the Seattle area that was thinking along these lines. Dude, we were having a discussion at work. And one of the senior directors was telling everyone, no, this is not a thing. This will be over in a few weeks. We won't even hear any more about it. When was this? This was like early like, February. Early February. And I was sitting there debating whether I should raise my hand and say, well, I watched this video on YouTube. <laughs> so I didn't. I just kind of kept quiet. But in my head, I was going like, I don't know. Because, you know, the lockdown didn't become a reality till March. March. So yeah. at this point in February... I had a trip going to February to um, Disney, February fifteenth, and it's the the start of February. And I'm talking to my wife, and I'm going because she's starting to hear me. Two two things happened that were very weird. Do you remember I told? That's when I got sick for a week. Remember? Yeah, like really sick. Which to this day, both my doctor and I are curious about whether it was COVID or not. But mm-hmm. whatever it was, during that time, I watched a ton of videos. I like deep dived into this thing. So I was the crank going to my wife. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. We might be in lockdown. We might be this. And she's like, uh, okay. And then she's I used, showing she's her the videos. She's used to it. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, no, look at these videos. Right, because that's the other thing. Your broken clock is right four times a day. <laughs> exactly. Not, not just twice. And so then I, I tell her, like, listen, we might need to cancel our trip to Disney. Yeah. And Did you like, cancel it? No. Oh. Which was so reckless. But, but oh, come on. Who would have? would have known no 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 so uh, so that's interesting so even from your standpoint yeah even though you were actually wearing the tinfoil hat you still that's that's why i, I still wanna, went to disney that's what i want to get across and i didn't know this about you but that's that's really interesting and, and think about disney it's not like yeah it, it's it's the, one of the most crowded places in well, the world i went to mardi gras right which we'll get to right. in a second so i went not only to mardi gras but i also after this point but i also went to Tahoe, which is casi- oh, yeah, yeah. which is casinos, right? <laughs> you know, and tightly packed uh, gondolas right. heading up the mountain with that you can't even breathe in normally, let alone in a time. But anyway, so and I was fighting in the meantime. I was uh, getting in fights on Facebook because about I, about this. I was because uh, people in the be neighborly site. You know how they have those like neighborhood things. Yeah, I was getting on there because people are like. Oh, people are stocking up on stuff. They're so stupid. This, and I was trying to send them links and saying in like, February or March? Febr- in February, in February. No, because by March we were locking down. But everything, I don't know. Like, if if people in you, know, you talking about it, okay, because you have the the history. And by the way, I tried to find my history 
on YouTube, my watch history, and I Googled it and figured out there was a way to do it, but I couldn't figure out how to actually do it. Maybe you so. Can show I know me. the channels that I was watching, and I I went on their, on oh. their playlist. But you don't I have found, your actual. I haven't. I haven't tried because that's so far back. Right. I, my phone doesn't go that far back. I yeah. would have to go on the. On, anyway, yeah. yeah. So, but I found that in the channel, I went back and found the exact video and yeah. the date, the date that it was published. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but anyway, because so, I'd be surprised if people in your neighborhood, from my memory, I don't remember anyone giving a crap until a couple weeks before the shutdown. Yeah. But that, in, but in February, I don't remember anyone. That's late February. I don't remember anyone. Yeah. Late, late yeah. February. No, but that's, I guess that's what I'm talking about is that I, I was that guy online late in, February. This, in late February. Yeah yelling at people not yelling but like posting links and being yeah. like, no you're wrong this right. is because by then i was i was almost there yeah. too i'm talking we're still early february and early point. february i my my brother actually got concerned he told me this way later like last year he told me that he got concerned for me because when i told him i don't think you should plan a trip to seattle man i think this is going to be really bad and i sent them some links he didn't tell me this at the time, but he got worried. He's like, oh, no, my brother's so, gone off the deep end. Yeah, well, what's happens a lot, you Which, know, with, yeah, with you. Yeah. And, I mean, not terrible. Yeah. You're not like, you're not a complete crank, but <laughs> but you have a lot of anxiety, which we'll get to in a second about our episode about health anxiety. Right. Do you have the history of that email? You probably do. It was do. A chat. It was text chat. Yes. You, you could probably scroll back. Right. And f could that be interesting to see the exact date that you were so worried that you were telling him? Uh, right. Uh, so, unfortunately, you know how it is on on iPhones, you have to keep scrolling. Yeah, yeah. I only got to 2021, so I'm gonna download my history on my PC and then grab it. Okay. But because I'd be curious as when you were actually pretty worried to the point where you're telling your brother not to come up, even though you want to see him. It right? was early February, and, and oh. I don't know the exact date. But the reason I know is because it's when, when I was sick. It was while I was sick, and it was before my trip to Disney. And the trip to Disney was the 15th. Okay. This, the reason why I want why I'm really hammering on this is because. When they make the movies about this time, yeah, they probably will make fun of all the people right. that didn't see it coming. Right, right, right. And I want to just put on the record that it was arguably a overreaction at the time based on even what we knew. I mean, maybe you could argue, but or at least at the very, at the very least, smart, connected, well-informed individuals who have mild OCD like myself, you know, meaning that yeah. I, I already have, I've had a compulsion and a, an obsession around viruses for a long time. I'm not diagnosable, but I'm, I'm in that direction. Right. Even people like myself were not worried at all until we were, which I'll get to in a second. But now February 4, the Diamond Princess, the cruise ship is having a major outbreak. Right. And the ship was quarantined in Yokohama, Japan, for about a month. Of the 3,700 plus passengers and crew, about 700 became infected and nine people died. Yeah. And there's a documentary called The Last Cruise that came out last year. And the whole documentary, from my memory, I gave it a six out of 10, by the way. It's yeah, I, didn't, I watched it. I didn't. Uh, didn't we talk about it or something? Maybe. Because I didn't find it like to be a good documentary. Well, but... it wasn't amazing. It seemed kind of cobbled together yeah. pretty quick. It seemed more like a research project because they took like five couples yeah. who had f filmed themselves because they just were, you know, while they're stuck on this boat, they would film themselves yeah. for Facebook or checking in with their family or something. And they took all that footage and then compiled it and then had post interviews with these people and compiled it into a documentary. But it really lays out just how terrifying it was oh, to, yeah. to be, because not only are you stuck on this cruise ship, but you're actually stuck in this tiny room and you're not getting information. Yeah. You're not. And, and no one, and they're, but they don't know the thing is like, no one knows much, but even yeah. the stuff that they do know, the government, the Japanese yeah. government, they're also not telling you anything. And then you also have the, hierarchy in terms of oppression you have the 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 lower immigrant workers who are really forced to be exposed and that kind of thing i thought a lot about this during the pandemic during that where so we are you we as in you and i who are in a privileged part of the world we have privileged a lot of privileges right Pri pri privilege, privilege, yeah. privilege in fact i i don't think i ever felt as privileged 
as I did when the COVID outbreak was in right. full effect and I could stay home and work. Right. But I, I kept thinking how we take for granted that like if we go to a restaurant or a theater or a thing, uh, or, or even if we're on a boat or something and things are not going well, like we can complain. Now they don't always fix things, but usually at the very least you could just leave the restaurant, not leave a tip or something, you know, like, and sometimes, um, sometimes if you get pulled over or something, you get to experience, oh, okay, well, I, I can't just take off right now. I gotta like actually deal with the police officer. But then there's this whole other level where you're on a boat in a totally different country they don't care at all about your opinion. They they don't they will not listen to anything you have to say. You don't matter. You're you're a number on a boat. And from their perspective, it's for good reason because they're doing it for the greater moral good. Involved. Right. We're referring to I believe an Indonesian fella who was on the boat. I think. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember or a Filipino fella that was on the boat, and just how this boat, which I believe is a British company was just treating him like right. utter, utter shit. Right, and and so I kept thinking about that, how, wow, you're just like, we have this illusion, like we have rights, and if I say I don't, you know, but it, there's these moments where you lose all of it. <laughs> yeah. And it sucks, because you, you must feel so, think about even just in our situation with all our privilege and our ability to work from home and everything, it still felt fairly powerless, like, wow, we're, we're stuck at home. Yeah. Wow. But at least I could walk but from my could walk and bathroom to my living or room. Yeah. I could walk around the block. Right. Yeah, people on this boat, because the, the Filipino or Indonesian guy, I can't remember. It might even be Singaporean. I'm not sure. But they were stuck in the bowels of the boat with no windows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they didn't even have windows. Okay. So then we have February. So this is happening. I remember hearing about it. I remember, I mean, at this point, people hadn't died yet, but I, I'd heard that there was a cruise ship that had a had an outbreak and they had again i thought well wow they're they're really cracking down cuz to me as someone who's been fairly concerned about viruses for 20 30 years i always am like yeah this is what you should be doing you should be quarantining right. you should right. be shutting down the boat but they never do that i'd never heard of stuff like this before right it, it, a, a a really bad flu breaks out uh, how many countless cruise no, ships never <laughs> have had have had flu outbreaks yeah and they do nothing now to, to what is funny I, I did end up uh reading which this. by the way the flu does kill people oh totally yeah i ended up reading this paper on the sars virus uh during during the pandemic at some point I, I don't remember why but i read this whole paper on the sars virus little did we know like in fact the reason the sars virus didn't become a big deal is because they did a really good job quarantining and 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 being on top of it. Mm. But anyways, so yeah, I I was not aware either, or not either. Unlike you, I actually wasn't thinking like, oh, there should be all these procedures in place. So when all this was happening, I was sort of like, whoa, mm -hmm. that's crazy. That's like those zombie books I read, those mm -hmm. Ebola books. Yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, if you as a listener want to also share, because I I do want to hear your experiences comment below on youtube comment below on patreon email in because you know i'm just going to take a guess and say that you have your own memories uh, it'd be better if you commented below on youtube and patreon because then you can t talk amongst yourself berto and i will also converse with you on patreon anyway but um let's take a break and so then we'll go to february 9. Okay, so it's February 9, Birdo, and it's the Oscar party, which you attended at my yeah. house, and Parasite won, if you remember. It was a fun night. Yeah. And... I, is that... The, did I win that year? You might have. I might have. Yeah. Uh, you, you you win a good amount of time. You and Taryn win an yeah. So that was fun. And then February 11th was when COVID-19 was coined. And I might have read it at that point, but I everyone was calling it the coronavirus, right? Which, by the way, is a set of viruses that, in all likelihood, you've been infected. All of us have been infected with various different types of coronaviruses. Yep. This was a, a novel, a new coronavirus, uh, SARS-CoV-2. Then February fifteenth, I went to a Seattle Dragons game, and so that was the fifteenth. Fifteenth. So in the meantime, I'm in Disneyland. So okay. you're at the game. Yeah. I'm in Disneyland, kind of biting my nails. So we're there, because we're not masked up yet. Mm -hmm. 
and we're there. And well, bo- plus it wasn't known that it would be a respiratory transmissible ah, virus. No, 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 no. See, I had already ordered a pack of N fifty, whatever N ninety five, N ninety five masks. Really? Because of these videos. Okay, that's funny. Because I had a pack of N ninety five masks. Yeah. So I guess this is part of the whole thing because a year or two earlier, because of all the fires that were happening oh, interesting. in Seattle, I actually had a client at the time who was a venture capitalist and was talking about how he had various different investments and, and, yeah. and business dealings and ideas. And one of the ideas he had was he was going to because during the fires in Seattle and in Washington, he himself was having a hard time getting these masks Mm -hmm. because they're not something that you usually need to buy N95 or these kinds of masks. He thought that he would create his own distribution website. Oh, interesting. And then when a fire happens, he's, he's thinking, yeah, he will be, he'll have a garage full of inventory ready to go and he would actually be able to jack up the prices a little bit because i, th- I think that's called hoarding <laughs> yeah. but he, he's not thinking it'll be a pandemic right. for the world he's just thinking it'll be a seattle thing you know yeah. what i mean and he he wanted to make it more convenient for people anyway sure sure you know i'm hearing him talk about this and of course i'm providing therapy but the back <laughs> of my mind i'm thinking maybe i should buy some of these and, if, and I, so i actually bought a box oh that was two years prior <laughs> But the problem was when it came came time to actually utilize these masks early pandemic, yeah. the I, it, it, the way it looked is if you had them and were wearing them, you were one of those assholes <laughs> who were who were hoarding them and, right. and managed to order them online. And, you know, you, you managed to wrestle them out of the hands of the hospitals. Right. Which was me, basically. <laughs> during, but after everyone was. Oh, at, yeah. No, you had bought them earlier. I bought them in February. Yeah. yeah and so I had bought them uh, earlier as well. And, by, and, and, yeah. and but, but I felt like I was getting screwed because sure. it's not my fault I had I'd prepared. The other thing is I opened the box almost as soon as I got it. Yeah. Because I might have needed one or something. And once you open the you break the seal Mm -hmm. you're you're not supposed you can't donate it to a hospital at oh sure sure and so because a lot of people even upon hoarding they were being there's a lot of public shaming going on Uh. on on the internet remember you know oh i told you yeah i told you i mean so much so that i don't i think i wore two of those masks period yeah because i i didn't feel comfortable because of that because i was like you know what I probably should just wear a normal mask. What do you mean? What you didn't feel comfortable? Because once the, once the thing actually got going, I totally remember that. Yes, if you had a ninety five mask, people would be like, "Those should be in a hospital." Right? Like right. It, it was harsh. And like, it's not like I bought boxes and boxes. I bought one box of yeah. like ten masks. Me too. I had a yeah. box of ten masks, yeah. and, and, by and the way, I had the already opened I, it, but I couldn't I, wear them because right, right. I didn't want to get shame. I, you know, I, I, it was also quite unwieldy, and they're not comfortable. I, I I prefer them. I, okay. I, I actually still to this day wear it because it's got the little metal things. But the reason I got them is because in those channels, I was watching two channels and they specifically talked about how uh, they weren't sure if it was airborne yet. Like they weren't sure if it was air transmissible, but they did know that the coughing was transmissible. Mm-hmm. And they said that they thought that the molecule was too small or that the, the virus was too small that normal hospital mask wouldn't stop it so the guys were specifically going like you need to buy n95 masks Man. i had never heard of n95 masks. yeah i hadn't <laughs> heard about it until a couple years earlier but my god are these guys patting themselves on the back well here's being... the weird thing dude so during this period of time i kept telling people listen i'm not saying this because i'm some sort of like smart person about viruses i don't know any of this but everything they're saying like they're they're backing it up with information and I'm not an idiot. I'm listening going, okay, that actually sounds reasonable. And what I was upset about is, where's the government? Because yeah. I kept thinking, but wait a minute. If this guy who's just some random Yahoo on YouTube who can I, string together charts or whatever, and me who is a total lay person listens to it and goes, wait, wait, yeah, that that's actually reasonable. Yeah. That makes sense. Where the hell is the government? Yeah. Yeah, and you know we'll get into Trump in yeah, a bit, yeah. but uh, it was it wasn't just Trump. It, yeah, I. It I, wasn't I'm sure, even, and yeah. I don't know enough about it, but I know a little bit about it. But I'm sure 
in the next five, 10 years, there will be documentaries and recreations that will illuminate what the problem was. My random guess is that because we did as the United States and Great Britain, by the way, have been the past 10 years, maybe 20 years already prepping pretty yeah. hard for what to do. Now, again, you could blame Trump for discounting a lot of it, but the government isn't run by Donald Trump. He's Donald Trump's a part of it. You know what I mean? So there was, I think, also a lackadaisical attitude on behalf of a lot of people about this, even though there were people that probably knew better. You know, I'm guessing it was a combination of the, and this is where the psychology and sociology comes into play. I wouldn't be surprised if there were a bunch of public health people and a bunch of pandemic experts, even working for the government or university researchers who were quietly worried, but didn't want to come across as that tinfoil hat yeah. crank. The one you were watching on YouTube isn't part of that establishment, but he also <laughs> has already crossed the Rubicon. Right, right. You exactly. know what I mean? He's like got no credibility. To yeah. Lose. No one cares. He, you know, and, and he's already on yeah. that side of things anyway. And so he has nothing to lose. Whereas yeah. the rest of regular respectable society doesn't want to be that one person that crosses the line and starts saying, um, yeah. not only is this a problem, because I heard from experts that it could be a problem. They're yeah. like, this could be big. Yeah, yeah. But no one was like, look, people, I got to get real with y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Unless we do X now, yeah. people are going to... Now, eventually they did. They're, eventually well, it, it, yeah. it got to a critical mass a little too... I mean, you could argue... So that's the other thing that I, I really want experts and i know that they're looking into this is like because there seem to be so many things fateful decisions you know a week too late or this you know, this thing that happened uh, even trump's entire presidency you could argue had all these issues but you know as the years and months uh, pass like with china for example right now uh, i don't know but from my understanding is they were experiencing a wave or a threat in late 2022 right and so the government cracked down on, severely on, yes. on a lot of the population and used absolutely draconian measures maybe for the greater good but with that without having access to enough vaccinations and medicines so it was like we don't have access to give the proper protection. So instead, no one leave, no one do anything. Right. And we're going to enforce it by force. And we will deliver food to you. Yeah. And of course, when you shut down the economy, all sorts of things fall apart. The, the food economy, for example. Then the people protested and the government relented and relaxed or got rid of the draconian measures. People were able to return to human life. And... Then they had a massive, yeah. massive wave because you have all these people that are maybe they're vaccinated a little bit or the the variant isn't responsive to that vaccine. Well, and, all and, these and again, they still yeah, they still don't have enough vaccines and medicines. And so it's the worst of both worlds. Now they don't have the restrictions and they don't have enough supplies and they don't have enough uh, hospitals. And, and, you know, it's all of the above. But it's sort of a trade off, right? Like if yeah. you shut down the entire economy, you're not going to be able to get right. the supplies. Right. Yeah, I don't know. It's all kind of related, from, right? From the outside looking in, it seems like they traded one extreme for another extreme. Right. Maybe there was a middle ground there, yeah. but it's possible that you're doomed either way. You, you either get it now, the current variant rages through society now, or you put it off for another few months and then it eventually just happens anyway. So the analysis that I'm looking for is, was it doomed anyway? Were we all, because like one of the things that I remember happening was there were all these comparisons happening like yeah. by mid to 2020 of like us in Australia and Sweden and all these. Like, and I remember there was this, a lot of talk about from Swedish people saying, look, we don't have a problem. You know, we're, we're all, and Sweden often is, superior to the United States. I would say 99 times out of 100. <laughs> every government policy, every societal measure, they, you know, it's always just embarrassing how Sweden and other Scandinavian countries, and they just got it all figured out. And so it just seemed like another example of that. But then it just took time. Yeah. It, eventually the virus got to these places and, yeah. and ravaged their societies, right. at, at least similar to Seattle, because Seattle has a extremely high vaccination rate. I imagine Sweden does too. And so 
was it just inevitable regardless uh now i'm not saying governments can do nothing because of course we can but is it just kind of like unless you catch it really early it's kind of inevitable that you're going to have a, a moment where you have to trade off economy and you know not just economy like people's stocks appreciating but the ability to pay your own bills and put food on the table and and keep things going so that people don't die from other reasons of famine and all this other kind of stuff. Um, you know, uh, that's what I'm looking for is the grand h- analysis. The, so the the irony that I found almost worked in our favor is that there is this way in which Trump would have easily won that year, the reelection. Oh, yeah. Because what would have happened is if in February the, uh, he had just embraced what the Fauci's, the few Fauci's in his circle were telling him, trying to tell him, Yeah, right? Shyly, but still. Yeah. If he had just been like, okay. Instead, what happened was, I I can definitely, I would bet any amount of money that what happened was, there was a circle going, if you have any shutdowns, or if we let this thing bother the economy, we will lose re-election. Right. Instead, it would have been like the whole... I am FDR. We are going to war against this thing. And, yeah. And, and look, would, would have people still died? Oh, absolutely. Would we have saved some of the New York crazy hospital disaster at first? A little bit, right? If Would if we have saved sooner? Would we have saved, and maybe this is a good time to get into the yeah. stats be, regarding right. Republican versus Democrat. Yes. Would okay. we have saved <laughs> a lot of Republicans and and also Democrats Absolutely. who were being right. infected because Republicans were not getting vaccinated or weren't taking precautions. Yes, yeah. absolutely. In fact, just on this topic, while you're looking that up, yeah. is when the when this happened, and I've looked into the statistics on this, and there's been documentaries on this. And I remember thinking this when you know mid March when this whole thing began. I thought, holy crap, Donald Trump is up for election later this year. He will undoubtedly get reelected because all he has to do is mail it in. He yep. just has to step aside and he can claim ownership of the whole thing. And yep. you know what? I don't care. I hate the guy. I, you know, I don't hate Republicans in general necessarily. I hate that guy. Right. <laughs> and for obvious reasons. And you'd have to be a dimwit not to understand what those reasons are, honestly, or in a weird echo chamber. And believe me, I don't like my echo chamber. I reject all sorts of shit in my echo chamber. So I'm not brainwashed. I'm sure I'm brainwashed kind of, but not entirely. I think, you know, I don't know. That's what everyone says to themselves. But (laughs) point is, is that I thought, I hope, even though I hate this guy, I don't want to see this guy another four years, but I hope he actually nails this. And it's so easy. And I thought this is a no brainer because his base, Republicans, don't give a crap about vaccines either way compared to liberals. In fact, right. anything, liberals and Democrats are more anti-vax a little bit well, than yeah, Republicans. Because it, it was a lefty liberal thing to be like new agey and be like, whoa, these vaccines, they, those companies, the corporations, yeah. they put the so anti-vaxxers much garbage in there. The, the Facebook pages dedicated to anti-vax yeah. were the same Facebook pages that were pandering to anti-GMO to organic foods to what more conservative thing than to hearken back to defeating polio yeah. and defeating all these like fdr could and, have been you know and corporations like pfizer absolutely big pharma absolutely you know and i'm and thinking then, and then his his administration comes up with the vaccine right he yeah. develops the vaccine in a lab himself yeah but in the end he tried to have it both ways yes, yes. he tried to both so, yes. so when it began, the ex- that's exactly what right. the obvious, obviously, that's the conversation that he had in his own stupid mind, which yeah. was presidents are elected on economy. Yeah. Doesn't matter anything else that's happening. If the economy is doing well, ran- and often the president has nothing to do with the economy. Unless you're in a war. Yeah. And that was what kept FDR in office. Right. So, <laughs> but you could also argue the economy turned around because yeah. of the war because it galvanized yeah. everyone. But- you have this idiot who wants to be reelected and is being told, and there's all these reports, because you know it's a paper trail of these conversations to Donald Trump from the experts, several different vectors, not just Fauci, but and I don't even think Fauci was involved at this point. There were all these other people, people e- even within his inner circle, advisors that he appointed himself, telling him, this will be what will define your presidency. 
and <laughs> it's and people are going to die and a bunch of crap is going to happen and he all because he is such the opposite of an evil genius right he's like a child just being like but I want my economy. And you're talking to your kid and you're being like, you can't eat 15 cookies. It's just not, or I can't buy you a Tesla, uh, you know, <laughs> seven year old child. But, but I want, I want a Tesla, but I want, I want one. It. Well, you don't understand. Like it doesn't work that I, well, I get and, that you want it. I want actually, my economy. But, but the crazy thing is your example of, and I want my Tesla for the seven year old. What's so sad to me is, we're not saying, look, I, no one is saying that in December of 2019, Trump should have, no. I am literally saying that in February, in February, all that needed to happen was for him and his administration to come out, not panicking everyone, no. just saying, here's what's happening. This is actually very serious. You want to throw China under the bus? Fine. Throw them temporarily under the bus. Right. But here's the deal. This is very serious. We have to take the following measures. But my administrator, because I am working so, solely on a vaccine that I will comes out of my brain, yeah. and we will get through this. And and to your point, well, that sucks. That got us another four years of this guy. But you know what? It would have saved lives. Yeah. And it it would have also kind of um, at least given us one thing to rally be, uh, behind that we were all on the same page. Yeah, I thought. Yeah. I thought you know because when George W. just happened to be president at the yeah. beginning of nine eleven. I liked the guy temporarily, you yeah. know? I remember when, it, it, it's hard to remember this, but when he was standing at ground zero yeah, saying, it was hard not to be like, we oh, will hunt these people down. Because yeah. you and I, as the rest of Americans, right. we were fucking terrified. Yeah. If this could, I mean, uh, missiles packed with 300 people flying around the skies, just yeah. raining down and, and creating chaos and death. And, you know, you're just like, it was and, no joke. and terrorist activity had been slowly increasing over the past decade in the United States, you know, from outsiders. You're just like, you know, uh, George W., he's he's not mincing words. You know, he's he's a straight shooter. That's why he got elected. Um, and so I, I remember temporarily liking the guy. Then we had mission accomplished and it was all downhill from there. <laughs> but I thought, yeah, with Trump, this it, it's this is going to be his re-election. All he has to do is listen to the experts and say he did it. <laughs> and, yeah. and I'll be happy with that. And in this moment, thank God that Republicans are pro-vax. I yeah. remember thinking that. Right. <laughs> I remember thinking, thank God that Republicans... Because we can't... At least that'll be one thing, you know? Yeah, the, the one thing I can depend... Because it's not a political... It wasn't even really politicized. It wasn't like Democrats were against vaccinations. It was just that, if anything... It, I just remember thinking... And it's so hard for me to, uh, like, comprehend this, that vaccinations and pro-Western medicine right. was not a politicized issue if anything it were it was democrats they were against it's it's so hard for me to wrap my hand my head around that given everything that happened because of him yeah he this is one of those moments where you can you can blame everything on one person because no one else it's not like a, some random republican governor gave a crap you know right. what i mean not it, at that point <laughs> not at that point because donald trump came out of the gate strong and hard about everything's fine about where this is gonna die and i have all these quotes from by the way but uh so you have so, the stats there yeah but. so here's some example it's just a smattering of things so there's 7.9 billion nearly 8 billion people in the world you know at the time when the COVID started it was like 7.6 or so well, there's more than 8 billion now but at the time there was 7.9 ish or yeah yeah Total worldwide cases, like you made a, did you already look it up? If I ask you, will you already know the number or can I ask you as a trivia? Cases. Total I, cases since the start till now. I, I don't know that. I know the deaths. Okay. 667 million for the world. Of documented cases. Of documented cases. Of documented cases, how many do you think in the US since it started? 660 million for the world. Uh. Uh, documented cases, United States, yeah, like hundred thousand or hundred million, million. a hundred million. million. So it's you know three hundred thirty million people in the U.S. So it's basically thirty percent, right? Now, granted, it's not exactly because some people had it more than once, right? Yeah, 
but it's eight point four percent for the world. Yeah. Well, the 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 more um, telling number is deaths because right. you can't. So you deaths, can't have a. You're either dead or alive. Right. You know so I mean? you have for the world. You Meaning have, that you many people around the world could have had COVID. Yeah. And it wasn't. They were never tested. Right. Maybe people in the United States could have had it never tested so the the thing is, is so, so is, for the world 6.8 million nearly 7 million deaths yeah. which is a lot yeah. of people dying from something right which is 0.1 percent of, of the population it's fine yeah it's 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 a lot of people yeah but for the u.s out of you know six it's a million over a million which is 0.3 percent yeah of the, so it's triple the percentage yeah and it's the u.s yeah. The highly technologically advanced. We invented the vaccines. What? We have the best medical system. Yeah. Uh, contrary to what people will say, like when it comes down to it, our medical system, if it allows for people to utilize it, which yeah. is the question, then it is the best in the world. We have all the ivermectin. <laughs> yeah. And okay. And so then, and another weird thing too about it is that you have uh 667 million doses in the u.s of vaccine so 70 percent are fully vaccinated but it took first of all it took a long time and that still means 30 percent of the country is still not vaccinated well and there are certain swaths where 80 percent aren't vaccinated right so when you split it like you were talking about uh by state and then politics right yeah so by state it's like for example in seattle and we don't have we have these data but i couldn't find for my zip code but we have certain like king county is something like 83 percent fully vaccinated king county is where seattle is but king county is pretty big yeah but when you actually look at particular zip codes like like Sammamish and Mercer Island and uh, probably your neighborhood, I'm guessing. Yeah, Kirkland. My neighborhood. We're talking 99% statistics. Yeah. Statistics show that there are pockets of our neighborhood in C of Seattle, yeah. Greater Seattle area, where you have 99% fully vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it's um, a stark difference from other places in, in the United States where you have 15 percent fully vaccinated you know that's like, right and then it's completely based on politics it has so, nothing else to do other than whether you yeah. are pro-trump or you don't give a crap about what trump it's not like i took the vaccine because trump said he was not you know he didn't and by the way he it's did, even he worse. did he get the vaccine take, took it yeah said to take it yeah but he also but, said many other right. things and the, his whole sphere said not to yeah because yeah yeah so you so, know, it, so it's not like I took it because he said not. I took it because that my doctor and all the experts said to take it, yeah. and there were, and I looked at the research myself as well. Um, so, but but but, but you have all these people t not taking it because one fucking man says, generally speaking, Fauci's an idiot. You but know? don't you think that there are risks with taking a vaccine? There's always risks. But but there's only been thirteen point two billion shots given. Yeah. Don't you think we need to wait till there's more? Yeah, so you know. we might as well talk about a, a cognitive bias here, which is, I can't remember the exact name, but essentially it's like action bias, where like with the um, the morality test. Where, right, do you do something or fail to do something? Right, so to, to lay it out specifically, yeah. you're standing at a, a, a train switch. You see a runaway train heading down the tracks, and it's about to run over four people you have the ability to throw a switch, it's gonna switch the lanes of the tracks. It'll save those four people or five people, but it'll kill this uh, this one person. Yeah. And so do you throw the switch? And for some people they will, but for a lot, but the conundrum is harder because you have to throw, you, you have to take action. And because you took an action, it resulted in one person dying. Whereas if you do nothing, then five people die. And a lot of people will say, well, but it's not my fault, but it is your fault because you have the ability to throw that lever. Yeah. It is your fault. You could have thrown the lever, but because we have this cognitive distortion around, if I do nothing, it's not my fault. It's similar to this. Whereas you have this choice, because if we look at it logically, you have door number one, which is no vaccine, and you have door number two, which is vaccine. Door number one 
is no vaccine, thus you will not run the risk of whatever side effects, very rare side effects right. there are to the vaccine. But we all understand that there's a risk to not being vaccinated, which is you will be more likely to contract the virus, the, yeah. the disease will be more severe, you will have a risk of dying, of severe consequences, of harm to your brain, to your lungs. Right, because one of the things that is not talked enough about, which I, I was surprised about in doing some of this research, is that because the vaccine gets your uh, immune system to start to be familiar with that, the spike proteins and with that profile, you're less likely to develop the cy the the cytokine storm, cytokine, cytokine, which is one of the main complications that was causing all these deaths. And um, that's interesting. Like that's like yeah, okay, so you might still contract it, but you're you're it's going to be less severe. You're going to have f less risk of dying. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, thirty over thirteen billion shots given worldwide. Right. So so you choose. Uh, oh, door number one, which is no vaccine, and you have all, all the percentages there of that we all understand. Then you have door number two, which is take the vaccine and your likelihood of contracting, of having long COVID, of having death drastically reduced, but you add an additional risk yeah. of the complications to the vaccine. Right. And since you have to take an action to get the vaccine. And, and, but when you add up yeah. the numbers <laughs> for door one and door number yeah. two, door number two is we're talking on the on the order of like 0.01% the added, the, the cumulative risk of, I can't read the exact percentage. I, it was way lower than that because I did the math a while ago. It was less than point one. It was like point zero one or something. Yeah, it's it's yeah. extremely unlikely. I mean, well, but you also have to add the risk of actually still contracting COVID. Oh, sure, 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 sure. So, so you add up. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah. You know, door number one likelihood of death or yeah. long term negative consequences. Door number two. Door number two is obviously the better door, yeah. but because door number two involves taking an action, idiots take door number one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and then so, they organize their echo chamber around, around themselves it, yeah. to justify it. And then you have what you have. And then, so the, the other aspect too about this is folks in general, we weren't taught statistics and what statistical significance is, or even yeah. what, like when you look at certain data, what is not likely to be an accident? What is not likely to be random chance? Right, right. Because some, you know, like a story will come out and they were where someone who had the vaccine died. Yeah. Well, you give the vaccine to 5 million people, some of the people are going to die just yeah. because they're going to die. Just like people die from peanut butter. Yeah, people, people die yeah. of all every day. Yeah. So did did they die from the vaccine? Let's look into it. It's possible that they did. It's possible they did. It's also possible that, okay, out of 10 million so far administrations, one person did have a complication. They died from it. Okay, that sucks. But 10 million people who didn't get the vaccine, 100,000 of them are already dead. So which one do you want? A hundred thousand or one, but because we're idiots and, and okay, here's the other thing. It's not just idiots. It's also just a terrible delivery of information yeah. in preparation for this episode. I just wanted to kind of look up some stats and I would Google, I would Google or I would type into YouTube or something or Reddit. Those are my kind of three main areas asking a particular question. The information is not easily attainable <laughs> sometimes yeah. even after an hour and a half of deep diving into yeah. a, I still can't find the answer to the goddamn question <laughs> the fucking government should have a, you know a team yeah. of inf, you know information delivery people totally who regularly have an Instagram account or something like and, and, the, and put it into layman's terms this should actually be like a Manhattan project for the for the government to yeah. say we are going to change the way people understand and consume information. Yeah. We're going to start with the educational system uh, all the way from K through a university level. And we're going to have websites and, and resources and people dedicated to the promulgation and explanation of data. Yeah. We'll work <laughs> alongside with Google. Yeah. Google doesn't want to piss off the government. So Google will probably work alongside the yeah. United States government because, you know, Presumably, they're interested in good information, 
And so they can say, look, here's where, you know, people who type in this question should be the first thing on the list should be this thing. And I'm sure Google would bump up the SEO for, for that kind of thing. Absolutely. Subsidize some of the top creators on YouTube to create educational videos yeah. on topics. Right. Dude, it totally makes sense. Yeah. Sponsor. PewDiePie to yeah. talk about this sort of thing, and you're already in in, in have a uh, five slides that yeah. are easy to understand. Now these things exist in, in some pockets, but it's really surprising just yeah. how stupid our government is. I remember going way back, to, like 25 years ago. I remember thinking the style of government I want. I want a president who, when the economy isn't doing well, he gets he gets a couple nerds from the local university and they have like one of those flip charts and they yeah. just start, they go, let me explain how the cost of gasoline is, it, 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 you know, uh, is determined, so to speak, by the market. You have this factor, you yeah. have that factor, you have that factor. And, and the president throws to him and says, I have, you know, three poindexters over here who they don't, <laughs> they're not Republican or Democrat. They're just three scientists who you know are nerds all day long don't listen to me about it yeah. what do i know about market forces these nerds over here they'll show you the graphs you know they they show the graphs and then the president just goes that that's the that's what that, yeah. that's my understanding yeah <laughs> like i don't know because i'm not an economist yeah. but you can't do that in our country no, no, because no, no, no. if you as a as a as a quote-unquote leader it did that it makes you look weak oh you don't know you don't have the answers yet yeah so when you look at deaths by state by the way so this is by for every hundred thousand people how many deaths right so essentially per capita S right so clear obviously you know new york right it's got to be the top no no what do you think in terms of ranking yeah top deaths by state in the united states uh, since you know, overall since the pandemic started, uh, New York's ranking. Uh, no, what do you, which one do you think had the highest rate of well, deaths for hundred thousand? They're Republican states. Yeah, they're all Republican yeah. states. So, like, <laughs> n name one. Alabama. Alabama is number six. Yeah, with four hundred twenty-four. The top one is Arizona. Then it's Mississippi, Oklahoma. I mean, Arizona, Virginia. you could argue, isn't super Republican, but it's still fairly Republican. Alabama, Arkansas, New Mexico, Tennessee, Michigan, New Jersey. So you get to New Jersey. Yeah. And then you go uh, to the other side of the fence. So the, the least. Per the capita. Least, yeah, per capita. So first you have Hawaii. Now you could argue a lot of reasons for that, but yeah. it's there. Then you have Vermont. Yeah. Then you do have Utah. Yeah, I saw this and because it is pretty Republican in Utah. Right. The one thing, if you've ever been, have you ever been? driven through utah i haven't but i've heard how like desolate it is <laughs> it is more desolate than you imagine it is um in fact nevada is even worse um i've driven all the way through nevada from tip to tip and utah and i can tell you that there's a lot of room the only thing i can think of is just like there's not yeah. a lot of so people that crammed is, into small spaces that is some of the things that some of these have in common the, Al the other th alaska the, is another one of the of right the lowest. exactly uh plus alaska is isolated right yeah the other thing and there's hardly anyone that lives up there like we've all heard of juno right yep you've heard of juno alaska yep. juno alaska we would not have even heard of this town even if it was just 30 miles west of seattle because juno is tiny so washington though is pretty low it's number six on the list yeah yeah and district of columbia maine new hampshire so the Oregon. Yeah, dc massively packed population right. center and per capita pretty low because politicians not, <laughs> be, not only because well it, you could the argue that government for our side of things Berto, we just did what the scientists said yeah. we didn't care what the fuck the politicians said because well, but what I'm saying is the politicians said one thing, but you can be sure they got vaccinated and they were safe in District of Columbia. Right. <laughs> Even the Republicans in, yeah. in D.C. Yeah. But D.C. is vast majority of Democrats, by the yeah. way. Yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, so, but, but not, so it's not yeah. only va vaccines. It, that's the one thing you can kind of measure because you either were vaccinated or not. But what it also is. There was masking it, and, and yeah. public events and everything. Yeah. yeah just the adherence yeah. to the precautions. Now, I will say. So now the difference is stark. Like it's it's three times greater death rate between the top and the bottom. Yeah. Three times. At the same time, to your point earlier. This isn't the kind of thing where like, oh, if we just listened to the libs, we could have had zero deaths in the country. Right. No. 
we were going to suffer, we were going to have shutdowns, we were going to have deaths. It's just a matter of how much, how, how much damage to the overall psychology of the country, how much lack of unity, how much division, how much preparedness for the next time. All of that is the price we paid for this silliness, for mm -hmm. this ridiculousness. Yeah. Because think about how if, if we had like come together and all these things, everything else aside, we were saying like, okay, and now we have a blueprint for how to handle. Guess what? Right now, the next time something like this happens, you would think, okay, now we're ready. No, we're not. Yeah. Now it's going to be another round of conspiracies and well, crazy I, and... It, you know, I, the Republicans often lag behind by like a step or two yeah if you consider it like that like you won't find a lot of republicans today who deny climate change in general that right? there is a change happening to right. the climate but you did hear that 20 years ago oh yeah, yeah. or even 10 years ago yeah. there are still republicans that will claim that yeah but they'll it's now very they'll funny. point to snow in the winter as <laughs> example that cl that climate yeah. change isn't happening you know global warming isn't happening literally a, a federal elected official yeah brought snow into the chamber and snowball. said there is no global warming oh and it's just like God. you fucking idiot and so they lag behind and i'm hoping and i th and i think there's some data to, to suggest this because still the majority of republicans got vaccinated yeah of course so and trump seems to be dying out the marjorie taylor greens yeah. and the wackos well sorry it's funny you say marjorie even marjorie taylor green read the tea leaves because when you hear her now she's dialed back her crazy by like 40 percent hmm. and she's making others like bobert look like real weird wackos okay. even though she's a really weird wacko. yeah so I, i'm i'm bolstering the point that yes i think that there, there's been enough evidence that, okay, being completely, completely out of this world crazy is probably not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's adjourn chapter one. <laughs> and we're not even, we're, we're at February 15th. Yes. And we'll pick it up where we left off in chapter two. What do you say, Berto? Let's do it. And everyone out there, <sighs> take a deep breath. This is stressful. <sighs> Wear your mask, get your vaccination, follow public health recommendations, follow your physician's recommendations. Why, Berto? Because you deserve it. <laughs>